in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel hello guys welcome to sas with service now this is part of service now four minutes video for developers this is the next lesson of series of rest integration in service now in this lesson, we will talk about outbound REST message in ServiceNow. You will learn about what is outbound REST message in ServiceNow, components of outbound REST message. We will also have a quick look of outbound REST message module in ServiceNow, which is used to manage all outbound REST messages for integration. So starting with what is outbound rest message outbound rest message is a functionality of service now to connect with third party applications to create to update or delete records in same third party applications outbound rest message use mid server to send rest api call to internal network applications Let's say you have an application in your organization and you have ServiceNow. Now you want to create or update records in this application from ServiceNow whenever user or system performs some action in ServiceNow. Now how exactly this can be achieved? Now this can be achieved via sending outbound REST message to this third party application from ServiceNow. Let's see the components of outbound REST message. A REST message consists of endpoint, which is the URL of another system where you need to create or update data. So this endpoint is mandatory element to initiate any integration. So if you want to call any third party uh, URL from your service now, then endpoint is mandatory. So you have to provide endpoint to send that call to that third party application from service now. Next component we have for rest is headers, which basically contains information about the request, like such as desired response format. When you basically send a REST API call to the third party system from ServiceNow, you can specify the headers. That means you can specify, for example, you want the response from that third party application in a specific format, you can mention in the headers. That's what you send to that third party application that, hey, I want uh, this kind of format when you process the request and return the response to my system. Another important component of REST message is authentication, which in which you define what type of authentication you are going to use and credentials to connect with third party applications. Basically, these are like uh, credentials which you have to specify and those credentials are basically provided by third party application administration. So whomsoever will own that application, maybe they are the administrator, like you are administrator for ServiceNow. Similarly, if whatever application you want to connect, you want to send that call, REST API call to that system. So any anyone who is uh, admin of that particular system has to provide those authentication details. Now the last important component of REST message is HTTP methods in which you define what type of operation you are going to perform in third party application, such as get, which is used for fetching data from another system. So for example, in ServiceNow, you want to fetch some data from another system. In that case, you will use get method. So when you will do a REST API call, you have to mention that method that, hey, I want to fetch the data. Now, similarly, we have another method like post, which is basically used to create record in another system. And we also have some other methods like put and delete methods in REST to update and delete records respectively. Outbound REST module in ServiceNow. Outbound REST module. So ServiceNow has out of the box module under system web services 
for outbound REST message where all REST message records are stored, which has details for connecting to third party applications. So whatever integration you want to do, whatever information you want to provide to your application so that it can connect to the third party application, that is something you provide in this module. It will have different records. So as you can see over here, that once you will click on that module, you will basically see the list of REST message records. And these are out of the box REST message records created for different third party systems. And you can also create new REST messages for your custom integration. So if, for example, you get the new requirement from a customer and you want to uh, create and connect from ServiceNow to your, uh, your ServiceNow to third party application, that's something you can create that REST message over here. Let's see the REST message form and its fields. So when you create a new REST message racket, you will see this form where you can define the different components of REST message. So whatever components, whatever important components we talked about, you will see, you will find those elements in this particular configuration, in this particular form. And the first field we have is name. It's just a name, so where you can just mention the name of the REST message as per your integration. For example, you are, you are going to integrate with Slack you're going to integrate with some Microsoft uh, Teams maybe. Those kind of naming conventions you can use over here. The next field we have is description, where you can provide details of your REST message. As an example, if you're integrating with Slack application, you can mention that this REST message is to integrate with Slack application. Just a single line, or maybe if you want to provide the details, it's totally up to you. And the next, field is one of the important element which we talked about and that is endpoint that's the first important element of any rest message where you mention the url of the web service of the third party system so for example if you're integrating with slack application slack application must have an api a kind of url and endpoint which you have to mention in this particular field so that it can send a call to the same endpoint and then we have authentication so here is the tab where you can define the configuration of type of authentication you can select over here that what type of authentication you want to use to connect with that third party application and then we have next tab where we have where we have called is uh, HTTP request where you have to define headers to send to third party application with that rest message. Now you can also create methods in the related list. So as you can see here on the same form you have related list that is HTTP methods which is again one of the major component of REST message, outbound REST message so that we can define it and that's how it will send that call to the third party system. Now these methods are basically kind of records which are associated with the different REST messages. As you can see over here, like get is showing over here, that this get method is basically related or created for the current rest record that rest message for yahoo finance and it is to connect with that yahoo finance endpoint so as i mentioned this http method is also a racket so that's for sure that it also has a form where you can provide the details so if i talk about the rest message method form is like this so you will find these details for http method so here you can configure as per your requirement of the integration. And you can see here the example we have for get method. So you have different methods like get, post, put, delete. But here we have example for get method. And you can see we can select as well. So if I start with the first field that is rest message which will be basically associated, I would, I would say, referred to the same REST message record for which this method is created. 
then you have name where you can provide the name for this particular method it's up to you you can just make it explanatory little bit explanatory that what kind of method it is just to maybe fetch the details of any particular type of record that is something you can mention over here and then we have next field that is important field as well where you can define just mention what type of method you want to configure for this integration that is something you can mention over here now if I talk about the methods now every third-party application if I talk about methods perspective might have different endpoints might have different URLs so in that case you can define endpoint and that's the next field you have and then similar to the same rest message record you have authentication so now here it's up to you you want to utilize the authentication from the parent that means the rest record that means rest message record or you want to create or maybe mention your own authentication details maybe any other authentication details you can mention over here and then we have next tab again that is for HTTP request where you can define the headers and parameters as per the use case you have to perform action on different system so you can see we have HTTP headers and at the same time we also have HTTP query parameters which you can mention now this is for querying whatever query you want to mention to your uh, third-party application that is something you can mention over here that's what we have a separate section that is HTTP query parameters so all the parameters which you want to send to your third-party application you can mention over here you can also send information to the destination system with dynamic data maybe as per the information generated from service now so in that case you can define variables which can be used to send dynamic data and this is defined in variable substitutions if I give you an example let's say you have a user in service now you you will you might have different users and in that case every time you create a record you want to send that information while triggering a call from service now to the third party system that means username might be dynamic how will you do that in that case this variable substitution is used so you will create a variable substitution where you can put the dynamic values you will push the dynamic values and those dynamic values will be pushed to the third party application during that rest api call 